Hey, YouTubers, it's Don from True Cable coming at you again. This time I brought friends again. We have the amazing Michaela and we have uh, the awesome Dave. And they are uh, here with me to explain the differences uh, between cable jacket types. Now, although we have extensive material in our Cable Academy to address cable jacket types and what to use where, we still get questions. So we have uh, kind of maybe re-explain this in a different format, a Q&A session that may help, you know, delineate the differences between what cabling gets used where, does color matter, stuff like that. Some of the more common questions we get that we didn't necessarily write down in a, in a blog. So stay tuned. We're about to get right into it. The first question we have today is for Dave, and it is, what is the difference between plenum and riser, and which one gets used where? Well, the difference in plenum and riser cable is in the chemical compounds that are used for the jackets and insulation in the uh, interior of the cable. Plenum cable is, used, is made for use in a plenum space. Now, plenum space is one that is also an air handling space. That's what plenum means. And often above a in a commercial situation where you have a suspended ceiling, often that area above the suspended ceiling is actually used as a air return, a cold air return uh, for a heating system, for example. And if you have cable in a plenum area, in an air handling area, it has to have a certain fire rating. And plenum cable has a uh, fire rated PVC jacket, whereas riser cable, which is also indoor cable, uh, just has a PVC jacket that is not specially enhanced for fire resistance. Also, the uh, insulation used on the interior conductors is different. Plenum cable uses a, a fluorinated polymer uh, for those conductors. And that means that uh, there are going to be different chemical products uh, uh, due to combustion. And so bottom line is, if it's a plenum space, you use plenum cable. If it's not, you use riser cable if you're indoors. Most of the time nowadays, the area above a suspended ceiling is not used as a plenum space. They have uh, enclosed ductwork for the returns. And in that case, you don't have to use plenum cable. However, best practices is, is that you keep in mind that a non-plenum space above a suspended ceiling can easily become a plenum space by uh, someone coming in and doing unauthorized work or incorrect work or corrosion or earthquake, who knows? Something could happen over the decades that this building is in service that uh, corrupt that ductwork system and turn a non-plenum space into a plenum space. So what I'm getting to is now best practices, anytime you're above a suspended ceiling, um, use plenum cable. Awesome, thanks, Dave. Don, the next question is for you. So can you use indoor cable outside if you use conduit? No, you should not do that. The reason is that our outdoor cable uh, or outdoor cable in general is produced or should be produced using linear low density polyethylene or LLDPE. And that's a significantly different kind of cable jacket material than standard PVC is. Um, the problem with using uh, indoor cable like uh, riser uh, outside, even in a conduit, the cable jacket on riser is permeable to water vapor. So what can happen is water vapor will get into the cable jacket and this is a natural normal occurrence, but outdoors uh, that, that water, water vapor that gets into the cable may coalesce and condense into liquid water inside the cable jacket uh, once a temperature uh, swing should occur. In other words, from warm to cold. And uh, water vapor uh, coming in and out of, let's say, a riserated cable jacket is normal. Uh, and it goes, it's a phenomenon that goes unnoticed. But if you have a wild temperature swing, like you may experience, for example, in a uh, outdoor scenario, that could actually cause liquid water to form inside your cable. So no, a conduit isn't enough. You would want to use the outdoor grade jacketed cabling. And that is completely perme or completely impervious to not only liquid water, but water vapor as well. Dave, we're gonna go back to you. So what is the right cable jacket to be used for direct burial? And does that change if the cable's also outside, but above ground too? The, uh, the material for outdoor cable jackets is LLDPE. And that's the same for both direct burial 
and above ground. Uh, the difference in direct burial cable and above ground outdoor cable is inside the cable. Uh, either uh, water blocking tape under the jacket or it's uh, gel filled, exclude water from the interior of the cable. Regular outdoor cable that's not rated for direct burial does not have that gel filling or the water blocking tape, but it's still water resistance beca resistant because of the LLDPE jacket. Oh, and I'm sorry, it's also UV resistant because of the LLDPE jacket. So the implication there is that the direct burial cable can be used above ground or below, and the uh, above ground outdoor jacketed cable is meant strictly to be used above ground because it doesn't have the additional protection. That's correct. Don, next question is for you. So why is Cat 6A riser unshielded cable ribbed on the inside? Cat 6A uh, typically unshielded cable is ribbed around the inside of the cable jacket. A lot of people may have wondered what that sawtooth uh, thing looks like uh, and, and also what it's for. So what we're looking at here uh, is the uh, cross section of Cat 6A unshielded riser cable. And you can see that the inside of the cable jacket looks like it's got saw teeth, like a, like a kind of a reverse saw blade. Okay, so the reason for that is when cables are put into a bundle, uh, what occurs is that additional space, that offset that the cable jacket provides with that saw tooth, it's basically a spacer. So that helps keep uh, the conductors more separated even when cables are bundled into a bundle and that helps prevent what's known as alien crosstalk and When you start operating your cabling above 350 megahertz to achieve for example 10 gigabit uh, Then alien crosstalk starts to become an issue uh, with the cable So you start seeing the that ribbing or shielding is another way of defeating that but in the case of unshielded riser or cat 6a riser you have the ribbing and that's basically standoff ribbing and it's to give uh the uh conductors more space between each other even if the cables are in a bundle that's been velcroed together so essentially that's what it's for is to prevent one cable to inter from interfering with another don another question for you so is plenum ethernet better than lsdh for plenum rated spaces and can i use lsdh cable inside a plenum space in the u.s on Amazon and other international style marketplaces uh, where you can pick up things that are made in different countries, you may notice uh, uh, various types of cable jacket ratings that you've not heard of before. LSZH is a cable jacket type developed in the 90s, actually mid 80s uh, in Asia uh, and Britain uh, to, uh, it's known as low smoke zero halogen. And that's what uh, that, particular kind of uh, cable jacket type is meant to do if it burns is to emit low smoke and in no halogen at all. And the reason why you started seeing uh, LSDH cables being developed in the mid 80s and a plenum specification on the in the United States being developed in the mid 80s is because of accidents that involve deaths and injury due to burning cabling in commercial buildings, especially. So in the United States, LSDH cable rating, or there's two of them, there's LSCH and LSCH2, and neither one of them meet the uh, the necessary criteria to achieve plenum rating in the United States. Now, there are cables out there that are LSCH and plenum rated. It'll be marked CMP or plenum and then slash LSCH, and those may be used in plenum spaces in commercial buildings, but if the cable is strictly just LSCH or LSCH2, that's not enough. Although they're, they're less offensive cables if they burn, it doesn't fully meet the requirements necessary for the National Electric Code National Fire Protection Act. So you may not use anything other than plenum rated cable in plenum rated spaces in the United States. And if you go to our Cable Academy, we have a blog that really explains the difference between plenum and riser spaces. And then it's going to show you some flame spread tests and carbon monoxide toxicity tests that really demonstrates why plenum rated cable is what you want. So I suggest everybody go to Cable Academy and give that uh, particular blog a read. It goes really in depth about it. This is gonna be our last question for today's Q&A. And Dave, I'm gonna give it to you. So does cable jacket color have anything to do with performance or cable selection? It has nothing to do with performance. 
and a lot to do with cable selection. The only difference between different colored cables, as long as everything else is the same, as long as it's the same category, same jacket composition, etc. cetera, uh, the only difference is the dye used in the jacket. White cable will perform the same as blue cable or red cable. So why do we have all these different colors? Well, originally there was a standard for which color to use. For example, horizontal cabling is uh, specified to be blue. Backbone cabling is specified to be white. We have a table we can show you that uh, shows that entire standard. But it's kind of an old standard now. Uh, time has moved on and, for example, Backbone connections are uh, usually fiber optics now. Uh, and so more and more uh, colors are specified according to what the ID department, IT department wants them to be. For example, they may want all of their uh, Wi-Fi access points to be wired with purple cable so they can tell them apart from their uh, POE lighting, which uh, they do in orange cable. And that's just one example. No difference in performance. You can really get by with selecting any color you want for any particular job you want. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, hopefully, we've answered any uh, last remaining questions about uh, Ethernet cable uh, jacket types. However, of course, if um, you haven't visited our Cable Academy uh, at TrueCable.com, please do. Uh, we do have an extensive number of blogs around uh, selecting the right kind of cable jacket and the right kind of cable for your application. Although each installation is different and, and there's lots of different kinds of uh, variations out there. So if you're ever in question, uh, please absolutely give us a call. So with that said, you guys have a wonderful day. Happy networking.